Well, it is another beautiful day. And you know, that means whether it's sun shining or raining or snowing or wherever you're at and whatever it's doing, we can choose to have a beautiful day because we're so grateful for all that we have in the kingdom of God and all that God has done for us and all that Jesus has paid for. And so we can go into our day full of expectation that great things are happening for us today. We've been exploring the blessing of God. We've been taking a look at whether God wants us to be blessed and whether he wants us to be successful in every area of our life. And lately we've been digging into the importance of our words. And I want to continue that as we go into today's episode, which is called No Doubt, No Fear Equals Results. No Doubt. No fear will equal kingdom results. And I want to pick back up at where we were in Mark chapter 5. If you recall the last time we were together, we took a look at the woman with the issue of blood and how she kept saying, she kept saying, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. I'll be made whole. She allowed the word of God to uproot years of disappointment and pain and failure and place within her new hope, a conviction that if she could just get to Jesus and if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be made whole. And that's exactly what took place. And Jesus said, daughter, it's your faith that has made you whole, not his power, Not because he was the Christ, the anointed one. Not because he was the son of God. Not because she was perfect. Not because she earned it. It was simply her faith. And I want to talk about faith today, specifically about how we can release our faith through our words and get the results of faith and the importance of making sure we're not in doubt and unbelief and fear. Mark chapter 5, and we're going to start today uh, at verse 35. This is right after the woman with the issue of blood was healed. If you remember, Jesus was on the way to Jairus' house. His daughter was on her deathbed, and he had Jesus had agreed to go heal her. And on his way, he was interrupted, if you will, by the woman with the issue of blood, and she took her healing. Amen. But He goes on here to say in Mark chapter 5, and we're looking at verse 35. While Jesus yet spoke, there came uh, one from the ruler's house, the ruler of the synagogue, Jairus' house, and said, "Uh, your daughter is dead. Wow. Can you imagine hearing those words? I mean, there's no sugarcoating to this. Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. So in other words... The one coming from the house said, listen, your daughter's dead. There's nothing that can be done. Don't bother Jesus. Let's just let him go about his way. There's no faith in that. Wow. Now look at this in verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid only believe. Now, I want you to know this is the key to the miracle right here. And he goes on to say in verse 37, and he suffered no man to follow him except for Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when he went to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, he saw the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly, greatly. Put yourself in this situation. He gets to Jairus' house. Everybody is mourning and wailing greatly. Imagine the atmosphere he's walking into. Um, Have you ever walked into a situation like that? It's almost tangible. You can almost feel the atmosphere. But Jesus walks right in the midst of it. And he said, Why do you make all this to do, ado, and weep? Why do you make this ado and weep? 
the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Now watch this. And they laughed him to scorn. So they go from wailing and weeping and tumult and upset and just absolutely beside themselves to laughing him to scorn. Look at the atmosphere that Jesus is dealing with. And he says, she's just sleeping. Now imagine the faith that it took to say that. Now she was dead, but I want you to see Jesus's perspective. He didn't go into a hopeless situation. He went into a situation that looked impossible. But with the power of his words, he was able to take the impossible and make it possible by protecting his heart. He didn't allow the atmosphere in the house, whether they were wailing or whether they were making fun of him and laughing at him, he didn't let it on the inside of him. And that's why he told Jairus, be not afraid, only believe. He dealt with it. I want you to see this. He dealt with it as soon as Jairus heard the bad news. Jump back to verse 35. The messenger came and said, your daughter is dead. Now, as soon in verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard those words, he jumped on it. Because, man, when you hear those words, you know fear comes and grief comes and all types of emotions just overwhelm you, knock the wind out of you. You've seen people collapse when they hear words like that. Words have an impact. But Jesus didn't allow that message to be the final say. He jumped in with his words. And he said, be not afraid, only believe. And then when he got to the situation, he said, why are you all so upset? She's not dead. She only sleeps. Look at how he's turning the situation around, the atmosphere around with his words. He's using his dominion and his authority to set the atmosphere, to set the atmosphere, his dominion, his authority, not theirs to set the atmosphere. So in verse 40, they laughed him to scorn. And when he had put all of them out, he kicked them out. They weren't in faith. They were actually contradicting what he wanted to do. So he got them out. He removed the negativity. And when he did, he took the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took her by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was about 12 years old. And they were astonished with great astonishment. So from great wailing to great astonishment. Now, they weren't a wailing, but the people in the house were, to great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and he commanded that something should be given her to eat. Today, I want to talk about the power of your words, but I want to also talk about the importance of doubt and unbelief and the spirit of fear that tries to come upon us. Your adversary will bring doubt, thoughts, and words of doubt and unbelief. And he'll bring a spirit of fear to try to cripple you, to try to get you off track, to try to distract you, and to try to get you out of faith. You have the faith, but you have to protect your heart. Remember what Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, that we have the power to speak to a mountain and command it to be removed, but we must not doubt in our heart. And fear will come to try to get you to doubt in your heart so that there's no power in your saying. Let me say that again. Fear will try to come to get you to doubt in your heart so there's no power in your saying. Your words fall flat. There's no power. I want to deal today with the condition of your heart, not your blood pump, the center of your being, your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination. Because that condition of your mind and your will and your emotions will dictate the power that your faith can operate with through your words. Amen. So here in Mark, 
If you look back at verse 36, he immediately told them, be not afraid, only believe. If you look at the other account of this in the book of Luke, Luke uh, chapter 8 and verse 50, it goes on to say here, Jesus heard those words from the messenger and he answered him saying, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. So she'll be made whole if you don't allow fear to come in and you believe only. Fear tries to come from the outside. We get to choose whether we allow it into our heart. Amen. We are to resist the adversary and he will flee from us when we choose to submit ourselves to God. Submit yourself to God and his word. Choose to believe him and his word. Resist the devil. Believe only. Fear not, and she shall be made whole. We must deal with the doubt and the fear and the emotions that come with a situation. Listen, emotions come to us all, but it's how we deal with them that will determine the power of our words. Because fear that we accept will contaminate our faith. Listen to this statement. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Wow. My pastor says that. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Fear will try to come. You can't stop that. But you can stop it from hindering your faith. And you do that by making sure you're so filled up with the word of God, you're convinced with what God has says, said, when the world says something, it doesn't have the impact that it would normally because you're so filled with the truth of God's word. Amen. I want to look at one more account in the last few minutes that we have in the book of John. If you look in the book of John in chapter 11, this of course is when Lazarus has died. He's been in the grave for days. And uh, starting at verse 32, I want to read down into this and take a look at the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Because remember, we're dealing with our emotions today, and a lot of people have misconstrued the understanding of this scripture. John 11, verse 32 says, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if you would have just been here, my brother would not have died. Listen to what she's saying. There's no belief there that Jesus can do anything at this point. It's too late. If he'd only been here, he wouldn't have died. There's no hope, so it's a hopeless situation. And she's accusing Jesus, if you just would have been here, he wouldn't have died. There's no faith in that. You can hear the condition of her heart. She's upset. She's grieving. Her brother's been dead for days. Verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping. I mean, this is a weep fest, which is normal at a funeral. And when someone has died, they're upset. They're grieving. They're hurting, full of pain. I get that. But it goes on to say here. All the Jews that were weeping, which came with her, Jesus groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? Then said unto him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, Jesus wept. Now, a lot of people think that Jesus wept because he was sad at Lazarus dying. Now, I may make some of you mad, but that's not true. Jesus was close to Lazarus. And Mary and Martha, they were very close. They dined together. However, Jesus cannot be filled with grief here. Grief is associated with loss. We grieve because we feel like we've lost something. If Jesus was in this state where he's grieving the loss of his friend Lazarus, he wouldn't have been in a faith position to do anything about it. Now let's go on and read. Jesus wept. Verse 36, then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. So that's their perspective, that Jesus is mourning Lazarus's death. 
Verse 37, and some of them even said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? So they're even questioning. They're saying, couldn't Jesus have stopped this? Couldn't he have prevented Lazarus from dying? And when we have that type of mindset, like, God, why did this happen to me? Why did you allow this thing, whatever it is, to happen to me? We're excluding anything good happening from that point. It's like saying, God, why did you allow this to happen? Meaning nothing good can come from this point forward. And that's not true. Never discount the God factor. When God is in your life, nothing is impossible to those that believe. All things are possible to those that believe and do not doubt in their heart or allow their emotions to control them to the point where they can't operate in faith. Watch this. Verse 38, Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, he went to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him said that of him that was dead said, Lord, by this time he stinketh for he's been dead four days. Unbelief, fear, no faith. Now, I'm not being critical per se. I'm simply pulling pulling it out and, and, and showing you the condition that they're all in. And Jesus said unto her, said I not unto you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that you heard me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So he's praying to the Father. He says, Lord, you always hear me. And the only reason I'm praying this out loud is so that all of these people here that are in unbelief and are in doubt and they're weeping and mourning so that they would know I've been sent for such a time like this. Jesus didn't weep because he was mourning the death of his friend. He was weeping at the unbelief of those around him. He'd been teaching about faith and showing them miracles and doing miracles among them, and yet they still didn't believe. He groaned, he wept at their unbelief. He couldn't have been weeping about the death of his friend and then also be in faith to release words of power that would cause Lazarus to be raised from the dead. That's not what happened here. He wept because of their unbelief. The entire time he went knowing that he was going to raise him from the dead. He even said in other scriptures, he just sleeps. Just like he told the damsel. He's just sleeping. In other words, this is a temporary condition. Whoever is sleeping will once again rise or be awakened. So from his perspective, this is not a permanent, hopeless situation. This is a temporary condition. And with the power and anointing of God, we're going to turn it around. And I just want to take this moment and say to you, there's no situation in your life that God cannot turn around. Unless you're not in faith and you're giving in to fear, doubt, and unbelief. Believe only. All things are possible to him that believes. And part of that believing process is, I'm not going to doubt in my heart. I'm not going to allow fear to overwhelm me. I'm not going to allow my emotions to uproot my believing. No, I'm going to choose to stand in faith. And he spoke, verse 43, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, loose him and let him go. So after four days, you can imagine the decay process had already kicked in. You can imagine the stench. So Jesus' words not only raised him from the dead, but it caused 
decaying skin and organs to be renewed. It caused brain tissue to be renewed. Fluid in his body to be restored. And on and on and on. All from his words. How did Jesus have so much power in his words? He protected his heart. He had a kingdom perspective. Things were not hopeless and impossible, but with God, all things are possible to those who believe. Believe only. No doubt. No fear. Believe only. And you will have what God promised you to have. Amen. Well, again, I pray that as a blessing to you today. Uh, I just simply want to uh, thank everybody who tuned in today. I see my friend Sandy all the way from Seaforth, Ontario, tuning in today. What a blessing, Sandy. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I put your comment up there on the screen. Uh, we just want to thank each of you who chose to tune in today. I don't have a list with me. But listen, Jesus is our example. If he did it, we can do it. Because the scriptures say, these works, this is Jesus, these works that I do, you and I will do also. And greater works than these. We just have to make sure we understand the power of our words and how to get the power of our words out into our situation. We have to protect our heart. And perhaps that's what we'll look at tomorrow. So Pam and I, we love you. These resources can be found on Deploy Ministries' YouTube channel or deployministries.com, free of charge. Check them out. Let the Word of God feed your faith. Renew your mind. Open the eyes of your understanding to His truths so you can experience more of His goodness. You enjoy your day.